clearly dedicated enough to make it here and spend an hour and a half listening to Louis Armstrong, and that's wonderful. I certainly am preaching to the choir in a lot of ways, so I'm going to keep the preaching to a, to a minimum. But I do just want to ask, how many people here have, other than that, heard 78s before? So most of the people in the room are familiar, but a handful aren't. And I'm really excited that you're with us today to experience something very special for the first time. Um, uh, just a quick little bit about my background. I run a group called the Hot Club of New York, which is a jazz, early jazz appreciation group for 78 RPM records. And um, we, the concept behind the Hot Club of New York basically is that the records that we have here would mean nothing if they were not audible, if, you couldn't, if they were unplayed, because there's nothing like the aura and, frankly, the sound quality of hearing an original 78. And I'll explain why that is, but I'll let you experience it first. Um, however, these records by this time are reaching 100 years old. Many of them are already 100 years old. Last year, we uh, celebrated the centennial of Louis Armstrong making his very first records. So Armstrong records um, are turning 100. And these 78s are the originals. They were coming out at that time. So these records are not renewable resources. Um, they're only getting more and more valuable, more and more precious. And I think that everyone should be able to experience the power and majesty of hearing Louis Armstrong from an original 78 without necessarily being a collector or without necessarily having to do much more than just come here and listen. Um, so the Hot Club of New York, that's the concept, basically. Uh, I, also, I just wanted to say that because the, technically the Hot Club of New York is a revival of the old hot clubs back in the 1930s and 40s where people were gathering to listen to jazz from 78s because that's the only format that there was at that time because the records weren't easily accessible even then. Records that had come out in the 1920s were largely out of print. If you were in Europe, they were even harder to access. And what we do, similar to what we're going to be doing today at, at Hot Club of New York meetings and events that happen all around the city, um, is very much what they were doing then. And I wanted to just point out that the Hot Club of France, which was kind of the major hot club back in the 1930s, had its, as its honorary president on its membership cards, uh, Louis Armstrong. And today, the Hot Club of New York's honorary president is Louis Armstrong. Um, I find the reason for that, and I probably don't have to tell you this, but this is, you probably already know this, but I find the reason for that to be listening to this music on 78s makes the 78 format makes all the music that was recorded in that period sound better, hearing it this way. And to me, similarly, listening to Louis Armstrong makes all music sound better, actually. Because when I listen to other music, hearing what he has done has, has made my ears so sensitive to his feeling and to the capacity of music itself. That's just part of the power of him. So that's sort of why we're here, why I'm here, what we're doing. Now, the thing I wanted to say about today's session is this being Women's History Month, March, we're going to be focusing on some of the great uh, female artists that Louis Armstrong recorded with across his career. You're going to hear some people that you're very familiar with, probably, and some folks who might be new to you. But to get things started, and without further ado, I want to play a 78 that, in my opinion, um, should be the national anthem, but uh, <laughs> this is the St. Louis Blues by Bessie Smith with Louis Armstrong. Should we stand? <laughs> Please rush. <laughs> Please rush. <laughs> 